very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be back and it's great to be here. <laughs> and I'm so happy tonight because at long last I have found a book I have been searching for for years and years and years. <laughs> it's called 1001 Ways to Please a Man. How I've managed without this book for all those years, I shall never know. Now, questions? Well, Dr. Ruth, I'm getting engaged to this guy. What is your problem? He's a lot older. Needn't be a problem. <coughs> I tell you for why. I give you a for instance. I once had a patient. He was a 79-year-old aviator. And he was going to marry a girl of 22. <laughs> and he was looking for a house near a school. Well, I knew he was air-minded. I didn't think he was air-conditioned. <laughs> so what did I do? I advised him to take a lodger. Well, he did. And last year, his wife had a baby boy. <laughs> what about the lodger? She had twins. <laughs> you see, it wouldn't be a problem at all. <laughs> well, I'm so happy tonight because I have a very special guest star. She is that great big star from that great big hit series, Roseanne. It's Roseanne Barr. <laughs> Tell me, Roseanne, why does your guy love you? Oh, because he thinks I'm gorgeous and sexy and adorable. And why do you love him? Because he thinks I'm gorgeous and sexy and adorable. <laughs> oh, Roseanne, oh, I love to see you laugh. <laughs> so much of you has a good time. <laughs> Any questions? Yup, yup, yup. How do you two chicks feel about the Yankee broad marrying a foreign dude? Oh, fine. Yes, especially if he speaks English as confidently as you do. <laughs> Tell me, where did you learn to speak like that? I went to Yale. Yale? You went to Yale? Yeah, as sure as hell I did. <laughs> How long were you there? I went to Yale in January. They kept me there till June or July. Jail! Oh, tell me, tell me, why did they put you there? Yeah, because of my religious convictions, I used to mug vicars. <laughs> but your wife, she, she stood by you, yes? Oh, yeah, she always has done, ever since we married in 1920. Yeah, and we still make love. Really? Yeah, almost every night. Almost every night? Yeah. Almost Monday, almost Tuesday, <laughs> almost Wednesday. <laughs> Tell me, old Annie, why are there so many divorces? Of course, if they're an older couple, maybe they get divorced because he's a womanizer. Or, or because the woman is a manizer? A man? Is that a word? Can you say a manizer? I mean, a man who chases after a woman is a womanizer. What do you call a woman who chases after a man? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think you may be right. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, you see, with, with, with a younger couple, they may divorce because the young man is suffering from something that uh, is, is very prevalent. Pre 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 there's a lot of it about. <laughs> and what it is, you see, he's inexperienced and he suffers from something that we call premature age. No, no. So I, I am very explicit all the time. It's called premature jocularity. And what it means is the woman tells the man a joke, and the man laughs before the woman has finished telling the joke. In a case like that, Rosanna, what do you think they should do? Oh, she should wait a couple of minutes and then tell another joke. Maybe not such a funny one. So don't use one of mine. <laughs> Whatever you do, discuss it with him. You should always tell your partner what pleases you. And you must be precise. Oh, you got to be precise, yeah. I knew a guy once told his wife that he thought black underwear was sexy. So for two years, she didn't wash his jockey shorts. <laughs> <laughs> right, nothing. Another question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to ask Roseanne why that television show of hers is so full of innuendos. Innuendos? 
I always thought they were Italian suppository. <laughs> You, you imply in that show that married life is all sweetness and light and lovey-dovey and all stuff like that, you know, even after maybe 15, 20 years of marriage, and it's not like that. I mean, look at my wife, if you've got the stomach for it. Oh, I won't say my wife is fat, but she's the only woman I know. Thank you, she was an old Oh, she was gorgeous when she was young. I'll never forget the first time we met her. And it was at the Notel Motel. She was sitting up at the Lucky Stiff Bar. <laughs> oh, she looked gorgeous. She had a beautiful shock of blonde hair, and I know how to pay a woman a compliment, you know, because I went up and I said, pardon me, miss. I said, pardon me, I said. But you have the most beautiful, natural, luxuriant blonde hair I have ever seen in my entire life. Why do you dye the roots black? <laughs> You can imagine it impressed her. And we started courting. <laughs> and then you married her. For better or for worse. Should have been for better or forget it. I want to see her now. Oh, boy. She does bird impressions. Watches me like a hawk. And eats like a vulture. What a mouth she's got on her. Oh, it's what they call a tacit acquiescence mouth. It goes without saying. <laughs> Generally speaking, she is generally speaking. You mean she is outspoken? Not by anyone I know. <laughs> now she wants to divorce me. Why? Because I do everything for her. I mean, I open the door for her when she brings the coal in. Keep the axe head nice and sharp so she don't hurt her hand when she's chopping the wood. Tell me, do you talk to your wife when you are making love? Well, if I think it'll make her happy, and there's a phone handy, <laughs> why not? <laughs> but then next time I marry, I'm going to marry someone who believes in give and take. Your problem is, I don't think you're going to find anybody who will take what you have got to give. I'm afraid that is the end. Oh, and so I would say to all the men, doesn't matter who bears the pence in the family, just so long as there is money in the pocket. <laughs> and to the women I say, remember, a wedding ring is a one-man band. <laughs> and so, and myself, may you live as long as you want to. And want to as long as you live. <laughs>